Welcome everyone to today's webinar on Microsoft SharePoint. My name is Bill Lowry and I'm the Services Marketing Manager with All Covered. And later in today's uh, webinar, we'll be joined by Travis Crampy, the uh, Director of our Application Development Team, uh, to go through some uh, a demonstration on Microsoft SharePoint technology and how it can benefit you. We thank you for taking the time to join us today. We hope you find the information in today's webinar uh, both the interesting and beneficial, and uh, hope that we can help you understand how these technologies can better help you with certain key business problems that we see uh, across many of our clients, and we'll take some time to, uh, to discuss those today. Now, just by way of uh, information, if you have any questions at all, uh, please use the chat dialog box uh, within the, uh, uh, the WebEx software. Again, you'll find a chat and you can send that to, uh, to the host or uh, uh, to the, the panelists and we'll be monitoring that. And uh, Derek Smith uh, from the marketing department here at All Cover, who's uh, lurking behind the scenes, will make sure that, uh, that those come to our attention and we'll either address them as we're, as we're talking during the presentation or more likely uh, address those uh, at the end kind of in, uh, in bulk. So we certainly encourage you to, uh, to, to give us your questions and you can easily do that through the chat dialog box and then we'll be able to, uh, to address those. So to start things off, let me tell you just a little bit about uh, All Covered. All Covered is a division of Konica Minolta Business Solutions, USA, Inc. If you, want to, uh, if you want the full name, that's us. We are one of the nation's leading IT service providers. We started as an, as an independent uh, IT service provider back in uh, 1997 and have been delivering uh, IT services to our clients, uh, everything from you know, Exchange email servers to virtualization to cloud computing. Uh, we've been in this business for, uh, for almost 20 years, and we were acquired by Konica Minolta uh, just over four years ago as a way of helping them deliver a broader range of services to their client base. All Covered has uh, uh, local offices in over 25 cities across the U.S., and we have uh, more than 600 engineers, uh, many of whom are fully certified in all major IT technologies. And again, uh, Microsoft's technologies are one of the, uh, the key components that we have, uh, again, countless uh, engineers that are certified in these technologies and delivering these solutions. Our mission, as all covered, is to help companies achieve their business goals and their business objectives through the better management of information and more effective collaboration and communication, both within their organizations, but also uh, outside of their organization. More and more we're seeing the importance of you know, communication and collaboration with your supply chain, with uh, other vendors or strategic partners within the, uh, the vertical markets or the, the client base that you serve. And our goal is to help your technology platform, your IT infrastructure, really help you deliver on your business goals. And uh, our, our, our hope is that you'll allow us to help you uh, with the IT so that you can focus on the things that are more important uh, to your business in achieving your objectives. You know, there's some interesting statistics, interesting uh, concepts that come up in conversation with our client base. Uh, one of the things that we've learned is that uh, uh, so many of our clients spend a lot of time uh, simply looking for information. And so uh, we did some, uh, found some research from some industry analysts. And one question that uh, we thought was very interesting is, you know, what percentage of a typical worker's day is spent searching for information? And you, you think about searching for information, uh, you know, all of us certainly, uh, you know, pull up Google and, and, and search some particular element uh, from time to time. But if you really think of, of what information is, it could, be a, it could be a contract. You could be looking for information in a contract. When does, when does this contract expire? When does it auto renew? What are the terms of a contract with a client, with a vendor? Um, it could be a purchase order. It could be uh, some. Uh, it could be you know. Did we did we send a payment for a, a check? Was the check received? Do we have a copy of that? 
all of those things are, are some type of information that many of us spend a great deal of time looking for. So if you really broaden your definition of information, it's not just looking for a, you know, a phone number or an address uh, of somebody that you need to contact, but you think of all the information that we're reliant upon uh, to do business that comes in the form of you know, documents, contracts, uh, billing information, invoices, purchase orders, and the number's quite staggering. In fact, uh, the, the, uh, the industry analysts say that uh, a typical worker spends about 30% of their time in any given day looking for information. And how much more uh, effective could we be if we can streamline and optimize uh, that process for finding information uh, regardless of how it came into the organization? Likewise, uh, that time spent looking for information is easily translated into you know, productivity figures. And uh, the same uh, survey showed uh, you know, how much does lost productivity uh, cost per year for every uh, 1,000 employees. And again, uh, this is uh, time lost uh, looking for information or uh, perhaps manually uh, executing processes that could have been done electronically and uh, all of these uh, take time uh, away from more valuable things that we could be doing. And in fact, for every 1,000 employees uh, that a company has, you'll find the, the typical lost productivity cost for them is about $5 million a year. Again, a, a staggering amount for a, uh, you know, a business of that size. Of course, if you're, if you're more than 1,000 employees, uh, you, you get to do the math, and, uh, and that number, of course, uh, goes up in a, a, a linear fashion. Likewise, if you're smaller than a, a, a thousand employees, so if you've got you know, a, a hundred employees, then you're looking at, uh, again, a, a, an order of magnitude less. You've got a, a half a million dollars of, of lost productivity per year. But nevertheless, uh, for an organization of any size, that's a, a, a daunting figure and something that, um, that uh, certainly we could look for intelligent ways of, of decreasing this. So the question that we have for our clients and, and those that we engage with is, is what is their plan? As their business grows, clearly uh, we're seeing a, uh, an exponential growth in the amount of documents and the data on that documents uh, that, that comes into an organization. And uh, another thing that we, we see is that uh, processes and workflows need to be defined, need to be redefined, need to be streamlined. Uh, so many of the clients, uh, I've worked in, in document management solutions and, and um, helping clients with, with data that comes on documents for years. And uh, one of the things that I saw is so many of my clients would attempt to just uh, – carry on with the same manual process, but just use electronic tools to do that, right? So years ago, I would help uh, hospitals with uh, uh, credentialing their physicians, and they were so used to, you know, I get a, a copy of a physician's license or a copy of a physician's uh, academic history showing that they, they really went to medical school, something you, you kind of like in a physician, and, uh, and, and they were so used to getting that on paper that when they got that electronically, they would do the same thing, right? They would just create a folder in Windows and stash this electronic document in that folder. And it really didn't, uh, the process could be so much better if they really optimized it for, you know, electronic receipt of documents and uh, electronic approvals when those things were possible. And so, um, so many people just keep doing things the same way, even though the tools are different, right? It's, it's like the equivalent of a, a lumberjack trying to use a chainsaw without powering it up. I'm just going to use it like I did my old manual saw. Well, that, that's not going to work. Um, so we really want to look at the full processes and redefine those and, and figure out how best to leverage the technology to get things done. And then likewise, um, you know, how does remote data access uh, benefit your organization? It's becoming critical for, uh, for vendors, supply chains, uh, other business partners that uh, – that need access to those information. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's more and more required for um, uh, uh, you know validation of of data and uh, industry regulations 
et cetera, so that uh, you know financial auditors want to know that you had certain documents or certain information in your possession. And in the old days, those auditors would show up at the bank or at the hospital to look at those documents. But now, uh, often they can, you know, remote in via secure connection and see that those items are there and available. So uh, the important thing is is to, to have a plan that encompasses all of these elements uh, intelligently. And oftentimes they're layered uh, as we go in, uh, in the process and, and so that we can add on and cumulatively recognize the benefits for your organization and that we're hoping to, to achieve. So uh, if you're not sure what your plan is, uh, that this is a, a great place to, uh, to start a conversation and then to, uh, to be able to uh, modify that plan and customize it to the unique needs of your business. Another question that uh, oftentimes people don't think about is, you know, is your business at risk? And how big is that risk? And how are you quantifying that risk? And more importantly, how do we mitigate that risk and eliminate that risk and be able to, uh, to, to be comfortable with it? Uh, without an effective and centralized business information system, companies put uh, revenue at risk, productivity at risk, uh, customer service at risk. Uh, I, I've been in this industry a long time, and I can't tell you how many times uh, the um, – you know, a customer has a certain expectation for a certain service level or a certain need uh, can be addressed. And, um, and, it, and it, if that comes via, via contract or via some type of uh, agreement with the client, and then uh, to find that the, uh, the vendor can't find that agreement or, or that it was, uh, you know, misworded or, or misunderstood, uh, and again, and com compliance to be able, whether it's, uh, you know, regulatory compliance, financial services, health care, uh, other um, uh, compliance elements that need to be uh, adhered to for given businesses. And it's so important to have that information centralized and accessible uh, to, again, mitigate those risks, uh, define them, and, and set the level of risk that you're willing to accept as a business at a comfortable level. Uh, I fear that many businesses, uh, unknown to them, are at far greater risk than they, they really know because they haven't take the t taken the time to ask themselves uh, if they're at risk and define uh, w what those risks are and what, uh, what, what the uh, downside could be if, uh, if, they were, um, if they were caught out without access to key information. Now we find there are some common challenges that we find across all of our client base. I think one of the things that I, I failed to mention when I briefly talked about uh, all covered is that not only are we in 25 cities with you know, over 600 uh, certified engineers, but we we service uh, uh, on a uh, you know full time basis you know over uh, over 3,000 clients across those cities uh, on on monthly recurring, and then we do project services. Uh, such as SharePoint development services for for thousands more uh, clients that we do uh, we do project work for on a on a non recurring basis. So uh, we have a, a a lot of data from within our own client base that we draw upon. We're not dependent upon um, kind of in, industry analysts. In other words, uh, as politely I'm saying that we've you know we've been there, we've done that, and we've seen uh, and helped countless uh, clients through these challenges. And, and one of the challenges they face are content and document management. How do I have the, the right content available and manage that data that comes in on documents? Another challenge is uh, internal and external collaboration. And again, uh, years ago is the internal collaboration. It's really, uh, you know, what was important to, to organizations. But now more and more uh, external collaboration, and, and again within uh, within your supply chain, within uh, part people that you collaborate with uh, as uh, as joint business partners, servicing the needs of a client. And then how do we make decisions, and what data is needed to make intelligent decisions? Uh, not only is there more data available to us than there used to be, but also it seems that those decisions need to be made more quickly. 
uh, than they needed to before. So that, that having access to that data is, uh, is critical. We often don't have the time to, to mull something over and to find the data and to, to think upon it. But we're really looking for that, that data immediately. And then uh, another challenge that we see our clients face is the, uh, the complex business processes and workflow. And again, time is of the, uh, the essence often in these, uh, in these processes but also making sure that the right people are in the loop uh, because of you know, regulatory and compliance. Uh, oftentimes decisions that were made at certain levels uh, now need to be made at higher levels within the organization. And so we need to have ways to, to get that information uh, to the right people at the right time. So these four challenges that we see across our client base are challenges that, uh, that we feel that SharePoint solutions are, are uniquely designed to help address uh, these multiple challenges. So, so let's jump into these uh, just a bit more and, and take a look at them. So when it comes to content and document management, common challenges that uh, our clients face are, are lost files, uh, lost documents. Again, I mentioned that uh, I've worked in document management uh, for years and, and specifically um, for about a 10-year stint I, I did uh, healthcare. And I used to see uh, files at my clients where they would have uh, a current version of the, uh, the physician's license. And, and there'd be like three copies of them in this paper file. And I'd ask my client, why do you have three copies of this, this same document? And they'd say, well, it's because we had it. And then we didn't know we had it, so we had to ask the physician for another copy. And then, uh, and then we didn't think we got it, so then they, had a, they faxed us one and they sent us one. And in the meantime, we found the original. And I just would shake my head. It's like if they, you know, I, I knew that moving them to, you know, electronic document management with a central repository would help them avoid these challenges of, you know, they have multiple versions of the same document because different people are collecting them, different people are sending them in. And once they, once they had one version, they were afraid to get rid of it because of compliance and maybe they throw away the wrong one. Uh, and again, they, they really weren't sharing across their organizations either. Uh, it turned out that not only would the, you know, the medical staff office have all these documents, but then the pharmacy needed those same documents. They needed to know that a, a doctor had a DEA license and uh, et cetera, uh, so that they could prescribe something. So again, as we centralize documents and can check them in, check them out, and know that they're available, uh, we control the versions. And again, this applies to uh, law firms, applies to uh, mortgage brokers. How many of us have, have, have taken out, uh, you know, applied for a mortgage recently, and it, now it's all, all done electronically, and you, you send the documents in, and then, you know, they didn't get one, so you have to send it again, and it's like, well, I know they got it. It was in the, the, the files that I sent. So these challenges are common across uh, so many of our clients lost files documents, uh, same versions of the, of the same, multiple versions of the same documents, and uh, having these islands of data across an organization, multiple departments, you know, the legal department, the, you know, finance department, they, they may need data on these same documents, and that, that's disruptive for your clients because they have to send that in multiple times. And, uh, and again, having a tool for sharing can be a great benefit. So that's one challenge that uh, SharePoint is uniquely uh, positioned to help uh, address. Likewise, uh, collaboration, more and more we're hearing our, our, uh, our client base talk about the need to collaborate both internally and ex externally uh, within their teams and outside, having the ability to search across different types uh, of content and, uh, and being able to have access to critical data uh, so that they're not hindering their work. And uh, another thing is to be able to design and have access to information uh, remotely. They may be limited or blocked by their current, current tools. Having uh, kind of a granular security model in place that, that protects you, protects your content, but also uh, gives you access to that content from, um, you know, known trusted platforms. More and more, uh, we, we want access to documents not only from our computers, 
but from our tablets, from our smartphones, so that we can sign something or approve something or, you know, keep ourselves in the loop as far as uh, decisions that are being made. And having the tools to do this in a secure fashion, uh, critical to addressing uh, challenge number two, which is the internal and external collaboration. Again, the, the point of having uh, being able to collaborate is being able to make decisions from your data. Data is you know, what's driving decisions today. Uh, a, a lot less, um, you know, guessing or, or, or intuition. R really, I guess you know, data always drove it. It's just that in the past, that data resided in in the head of you know some employee who was at you know a level in the organization to make those decisions and now decisions are being spread out you know throughout the organization trying to empower employees at all levels and so the challenge is is um, you know how do they get the information how do they search for it uh, how do they um, you know make the decision with all of the data that's necessary for them to make that so they don't, you know, think back and say, oh, I wish I had known this or I wish I had known that. I wish I'd had that piece of information available to me. Uh, it's better to be able to have that uh, all up front and uh, having that methodology in place for developing and analyzing uh, alternative solutions and then uh, helping them to be able to have the data to select the proper course of action. All of these are common challenges uh, when it comes to uh, designing decision information systems and providing people with the tools to make good decisions. And again, SharePoint is a, uh, a, a uniquely customizable tool uh, to allow us to create uh, good you know, decision information systems with the right data uh, inputs to make that possible. And again, the four challenges, the complex business processes. Uh, again, we've got to, you know, more and more companies dealing with confusing and highly difficult procedures. Again, because of, of regulatory compliance, things such as HIPAA and Sarbanes-Oxley and FINRA uh, processes have changed over the last few years. And there are more complex approval processes that absorb time and they've got to document you know, who did what at what time and, and obtain the right permission to perform uh, certain tasks and be able to, to document and show that you're following these defined processes for regulatory compliance. So all of these are things that can be addressed through, uh, through SharePoint. Again, SharePoint is a, a web-based platform developed by Microsoft. It can be used to create and host intranet, extranet, internet sites. So again, this really addresses the collaboration and the communication, whether it's uh, just within your organization or outside to vendors and partners or to the world at large, this can be an underlying tool to help you collaborate and communicate and document those process flows. Common problems we solve uh, using SharePoint for our clients is the uh, document and content management. Uh, we can automate data governance. Uh, we can automate the way documents are classified and organized, check them in, check them out. Uh, we can have you know, project management tools, business intelligence dashboards so that data is readily available for decision making. Converting, uh, what I talked about, that manual paper-driven business process into digital automated processes and we want to avoid <coughs> excuse me simply mimicking that manual process but really create new processes that are streamlined and more intelligently using the the digital tools that are available to us and we have uh, the ability to to create an enterprise-wide searching to have security restricted search contents uh, within SharePoint and hosting sites for both intranet, extranet, and, uh, and internet uh, sites, uh, using SharePoint as the underlying tool and uh, giving us the ability to customize and define the, uh, you know, what's available and, and what's visible. And, and I'm going to turn things over to Travis here in just a few minutes, and he'll show you uh, some examples and some tools for how we're able to do many of these things for our clients. So again, uh, around uh, content and document management, we can create repositories. We have role-based security, check-in, check-out, version control, content approval. All of these are built into the underlying architecture of, of SharePoint. Likewise, on the collaboration side, we can collaborate on documents, share information, manage virtual teams. 
Uh, we can uh, in integrate uh, presence, so you know, video conferencing and other tools, uh, as well as sharing calendars, uh, integrate with uh, Microsoft Office. All of these are underlying uh, capabilities that SharePoint possesses. Likewise, on uh, de decision information systems, we can simplify access to data. Uh, we can have, uh, again, advanced information uh, within search engines, uh, connect with employees, accelerate the shared business process so that uh, we can speed up the timing and the notification for getting tasks done, and enable employees to make better informed decisions. Important thing is, is we can share without divulging sensitive information, so we have layered security on as well for these tools. And then our, our business process, we can uh, initiate workflows for tracking and reporting. We can simplify everyday business activities, again, automate them using the technology, streamline approval processes. We've got this single integrated platform for, for, for providing these tools. And we can help you track uh, work things through a workflow and meet regulatory uh, requirements. So again, uh, we can host these sites within SharePoint. So we've got intranet sites, and intranet site is for internal communication, collaboration between uh, your employees. Extranet sites, typically we, we define these as being for uh, you know, external employees and other businesses uh, within your supply chain, within those you, you do business with. So again, you could have a realtor brokerage uh, communicating with uh, mortgage lenders, Etc. On uh, on timing and calendars and uh, scheduling appointments, and then internet sites. Anybody who wants to publish public information uh, and uh, data from backend systems to uh, these internet-based SharePoint sites. All of these are within the realm of possibility uh, as our application development team works with you to you know, answer these questions and address the challenges that we've discussed and build out these sites to handle you know, your workflow and your collaboration and your document management. So with that being said, I would like to now uh, turn things over to Travis Crampy. Travis is the director of our application development team, and uh, he is the, uh, the internal SharePoint guru, and he's going to uh, become the presenter and take you through a walkthrough of, uh, of what, uh, what we've actually done and can do uh, using these SharePoint tools. So Travis, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? All right, I can hear you loud and clear, Travis. Welcome aboard. And uh, again, Travis is now going to uh, present his screen and um, and allow him to uh, to walk you through a demo here of some of the great things that uh, Travis and his application development team are doing for our clients uh, using SharePoint to address these issues. Travis, take it away. All right, thank you, Bill. Uh, Good day, everybody. And um, so, what, as Bill said, we're going to walk you through a, uh, a demo, a general demo of SharePoint, just to see how uh, this can be used in a, a number of different ways. Whether it's going to be um, an intranet or, or an extranet, uh, we could talk about those two scenarios. Um, and just giving you an idea of how this can be laid out within your organization to be able to help find data. Um, information, documents, and everything of that sort. So as you see on the home page, um, this is actually considered a, what we would call a home page. Um, we uh, have a number of different items that we have on here that's uh, going to help display information to your employees. Uh, the first thing you see is uh, maybe a sliding uh, image uh, that can take you to different news areas. Maybe there's new uh, articles or, or something behind that that you can uh, uh, take someone to in order to uh, be able to display that information. Um, if you see down the, the right-hand side, you'll see like a, a bulletin board or maybe uh, uh, ar archived articles. Um, these ones are highlighting uh, people that are um, within the organization for Vertical Wellness Association. As we go down, you'll see uh, towards the middle uh, an employee spotlight, um, something that's going to allow people to see um, you know, the highlights of what that person has done and, and kind of recognize them for their good work. Um, we can also put out there your mission statement. 
uh, different areas to uh, different links. So if you wanted to learn, if you're as an internal person, learn more about your practices or uh, about VWA, um, these areas can take you there so that you can learn that uh, a little bit more about the company. Uh, if there's any sort of upcoming classes and events, you can schedule them on the home page. And then we also have a message from the CEO. These are just examples of things that can be done on the home page for more of like a uh, news-oriented type of um, uh, page where you can supply daily information to, to everybody. And as you see up at the top here, we have a, a different, different areas such as um, an area called Home Office Support, Healthcare Professional, and Corporate Goals. These are different navigational items that can take you to uh, different places such as, you know, home office support might be, you know, good for human resources and an information technology site and a, a marketing site, things that will allow you to um, kind of uh, do sites that are more for uh, internal or um, like uh, departments that are within your organization. A uh, healthcare professional might be something that uh, would uh, only go towards uh, the person of that subject. Uh, in this case, it would go towards physicians, products and services that they offer. And then corporate goals, these are all around goals of the corporate, uh, maybe board of directors, goals or projects. So these are broken down into a number of different ways, whether they are departments, whether they're informational, um, items or if they're corporate items that are out there. Um, so if we go into a site such as Human Resources, what we'll see is um, an area where we can see um, company announcements. Uh, these might be uh, just HR only company announcements where you there might be new HR policies. Uh, someone goes to the HR site they'll be able to see an announcement of the policies that are that are out there and, and, and have to go and review them. There might be uh, items out there for open enrollment um, so people can uh, sign up for health care again. Uh, and these are just some of the things that uh, people will be able to come in and, and be able to do um, on in, in each uh, different department. We uh, see we have a little tabbed item here uh, that allows you to just consolidate a lot of this information. Instead of having to scroll down a lot, this will help you consolidate that and, and make it a little bit more organized. Uh, just a feature that we sometimes provide depending on you know, some of the things that uh, you might be wanting to display on the site. Uh, you'll see that this is an area where you can store the employee handbook or you can um, store wellness forms, um, such as maybe like a direct deposit form or, uh, you know, your 401k forms, things that people will need access to uh, on a weekly or a daily basis. So as we're talking about documents, um, there's a, a lot of different uh, features in the document management area that uh, allows you to take, um, uh, take advantage of depending on what you're uh, looking to do. You see there's a little green arrow on this Word document. Uh, that, wor that green arrow means that it is uh, checked out to somebody. And what checking out means is it's um, kind of like uh, taking a book out of the library and um, no one can use it until that book gets checked back in. Um, same thing with a document. You can check it out. It still exists. People can see everything prior to the changes that you're making until you check that back in. So it's kind of helpful if you're working on a policy or, or something of that sort and then need to um, have it approved. People cannot see the, those items until it's approved and checked in. So what we're going to do here um, is we're going to check this in real quick. And what it's going to do, it's going to ask me for comments. So if I made um, any sort of changes, I can say made changes to page three and I can click OK and it'll check it back in and we will see that arrow go away. So we go down to the direct deposit form. Uh, that arrow goes has is now gone and it is uh, no longer checked out to anybody. Um, 
uh, you can also see that there's different um, uh, file types or um, different uh, what we would call metadata or tags. These are uh, different items that um, can be used to kind of classify these documents. So if I wanted to come in here and add another uh, item, it's going to ask me to check this out. What I can do is uh, come in and say, what kind, what kind of file is this? Uh, what, is, it a, is it a form? It's a new hire form, but maybe it's also a payroll form. So I've now just added payroll to this. I click OK, and you can see that the file types are payroll. So now if I wanted to uh, search and sort based on uh, file types or document type uh, based on the columns that are in here, you'll see payroll has now been added. So I can now do a particular search on payroll documents and this document will show up. Um, one of the things that you probably saw is uh, kind of like this document preview here where uh, you, you kind of see this, uh, this document prior to opening it. Uh, what we have implemented on this environment is an item called Office Web Apps. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to, <coughs> excuse me, um, allows you to preview the document before actually pulling it up. So maybe you would um, have a better idea of what that document looks like or, or something of that sort before you opened it. It's a really cool feature. Um, you can do a couple of things with this. You can download the copy, print it to a PDF. Uh, embed certain information. You can pop this into full screen mode. Uh, just a lot of different items. Um, you can see that this uh, document is only shared with me. Uh, you can also come in here, um, see who it's shared with, and then you can also invite people to be able to share this document. So what's different between this and earlier versions of SharePoint is it, it gives you more access to shared documents and, and different areas within SharePoint without being able to uh, always have to go to your IT group or the, someone that's a, a head of the department to be able to do that. It gives you the power in your hands to be able to share this document a lot easier. Um, as, uh, as I said, sometimes these, um, these metadata fields do have a purpose um, in, in different areas. So if I go to the documents library, uh, what you'll see here is the same set of documents, but maybe I want to filter everything out by uh, policy. So if I click on the policy, you'll see that all of the um, items got filtered out and is now only showing the policies um, item. And, and how that got uh, done was by having the, um, uh, by creating a filtered view that, <coughs> that only displays the file type column of policy. So if I wanted to come in here and uh, choose forms, you can see everything that has a file type of forms is now showing up. So let's, uh, let's just show you here, if I come into here and edit properties, maybe this is um, also a policy. I can start typing that in, I can hit save, now if I click on policies, we will see that the direct deposit author authorization form as well as the employee handbook is now in there because of the word policy has been added as the file type. So this is a, a way to kind of get away from folders and more so create uh, categories of documents so that you can find these documents a lot faster. So now if you see, I, I didn't have to drill down into this. I go up to the documents and I'm looking for, I know it's a policy, I don't know what it is. I click on policies and a lot of that gets filtered out pretty quickly. Uh, it just helps you to be able to take, um, take the uh, guesswork out of where these files are located and take out um, kind of the drill down that you would have normally with folders. And you'll see other items on here like ADP, uh, payroll and benefits, Prudential 401k. These are just links to outside, other outside resources that, that you can access, um, uh, that you, you would have access. Instead of putting these into your favorites, you can come in here and, and um, just access these from the HR site or if there's a corporate uh, links area, you can definitely do that as well. 
Um, one of the other items that uh, I do want to show is uh, uh, being able to use online forms to create a better business process. So um, take your time entry form or maybe uh, an expense sheet for form. You may have something that's pretty, um, uh, pretty simple. Take your expense sheet, you fill it out, you attach your receipts, uh, you give it to somebody, and it has now been four weeks since somebody had touched it because now there's probably papers that are sitting on top of that, um, uh, that, that expense sheet. Uh, one of the better ways you can do that is just recreate that as a form that can roll through a business process. So um, for this one, it's just a simple time entry form. I didn't create something that was uh, overly complex, but say I worked three hours on Monday, four hours on Tuesday, and five hours on Wednesday. You see that that starts adding up the total time. Um, and once I have uh, completed this timesheet, I can submit this. And when you submit it, it then can kick off what, what would be called a business process workflow. This can actually go from um, this area and uh, an email can be sent to maybe your manager to approve your time. And then an email can be sent and, and a task can be created to be sent to accounting to approve that time to cut you a check. So there are a lot of different ways that you can take uh, current paper forms and build them into a business process that you don't have to have the paper being uh, walked around the office. This is now um, done with an email alert and after a certain period of time they might get uh, uh, another alert saying, hey, you have a um, you have another, you have this waiting for you to approve and you can send, have that set up every day until that gets approved. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with the workflow behind the scenes. Um, under corporate goals, we have an area called projects. And the nice thing about SharePoint is it has uh, some lightweight project management items built into it already. Um, we have what, what we see here is uh, a timeline and um, within that timeline, you can see that, you know, what's coming up today. Uh, today is to order River Rock for, you know, ABC company. Um, so you'd be able to see uh, those tasks that are coming up today, and you'll be able to see it from the project start all the way to the last task that is out there. Um, we're talking about tasks. Uh, you can come in here and see who the tasks are assigned to, when they're due, um, and if they're a subtask or, or a, a main task. So you can see that these are, are overdue. Uh, one of the uh, things that I will do, it's 384 days overdue. Um, I will come in here and if I wanted to be able to push this task out a little bit more, maybe I want to make this as, you know, 8, um, 8.30. 2015. So I can save that and that will change the date of this uh, task. So we'll come into here and it says uh, that four days from now this is, this is due. If you look up on the timeline, you'll actually see, uh, if a little harder to see, but <coughs> you'll see that the project kickoff is due on 8.30. So this timeline gives you like a kind of like a like a nice overview of what things look like, um, but uh, it's it's a it's a very helpful um, utility on here. Um, you can assign tasks to people; they will get notified that they have a task assigned to them. Um, if I went into the calendar view of this, we will be able to see a month in advance what actual tasks are coming up. So you'd be able to see this for the entire project. So, um, you know, as a project manager, you want to see what's going on with this project. This is a good view to see everything that's coming up this month uh, and then prepare your team. And just as though um, we also we have um, document management within different areas, we also have document management within uh, project sites as well. And it's the same document management, only allows you to 
organize your documents into one common area instead of having to look for them into a, in, a, in a different folder. So think of it like if, you're, if you have done projects before in the past and you have a uh, project timeline in Excel and, and then you have documents stored in a file share somewhere, this is a good way to combine all of that information into one area. Um, other than that, I am uh, I have um, pretty much covered everything in the demo. Um, I'm going to set this over to Bill, and we will have a Q and A session at the end, um, so that we can go through and and uh, ask answer any questions that you may have, or going go into a little bit deeper of a uh, dive within uh, certain features and functions of SharePoint. All right. Well, thank you, Travis, for giving us a. Uh a good feel for uh, <clears throat> for some of the things that uh, you and your team have been able to uh, to put together. No problem for us. Now let me go ahead and uh, and hop back in. I'm going to share and uh, and take us back here. So in uh, some of the elements that Travis discussed there. So again. Uh, what we can do at All Covered to Help is we, we provide a full range of SharePoint services spanning the entire life cycle of the SharePoint implementation process. So from the initial design and assessment to, um, to laying out your, your manual, your, your paper-based business processes to electronic, you know, digital processes, uh, our experienced SharePoint consultants uh, work with your business team uh, to plan and build the solution based off your unique requirements and specifications. And All Covered will design and deliver uh, your solution through the development, the testing, the production, and support phases. Uh, our architects can really help turn kind of, you know, the vision for your business into uh, a reality as far as the tools that support the, uh, the process flows and the, the workflows and the things that are necessary to help you achieve your business goals. It really is a partnership between Travis and his, uh, his team of, of technical uh, engineers and architects who have a, a great familiarity with this toolkit and then being able to use this toolkit to uh, really expand your business and deliver on your business objectives. Again, what sets us apart is that, again, we have an in-depth experience and knowledge of SharePoint. We have over 10 years uh, that we've specifically been in the, the SharePoint business. We've got several hundred projects completed. We're a Microsoft Gold partner uh, certified in uh, these solutions. So really taking the time to uh, develop our own skills as well as had uh, countless opportunities to put these skills to work for our client base. And we think that these, uh, the experience that we have can be of tremendous value to you in accelerating your SharePoint solutions. One of the, the challenges that I've seen over my years in the IT industry is, is folks invest in a solution, they, they kind of catch the vision, and yet um, they haven't really outlined all the steps and all the phases. And so they, they hit roadblocks, they, uh, they defer uh, putting, you know, implementing certain elements uh, once it is deployed. They don't use it. They, they fall back to their, well, we just, it's, it's easier for us to do the paper process or, or do it the old way. And we're really committed to helping you see the benefits from using this technology uh, from, from start to finish. And that's something that our experience and our, our experience in the projects that we've done uh, can really, really benefit you and, and help you quickly achieve the business benefits that, that we've defined in the, the uh, analysis phase so that you, you realize those and, it, and you find that it's, uh, it's money well spent and you get that return on the investment that a, a good SharePoint solution can provide for you. So that being said, uh, hopefully you've been uh, submitting your questions via, via the chat window. So we'll, uh, we'll let uh, Derek get those into our, our hands. Certainly if, uh, if questions come to mind uh, after the presentation, uh, you can call our main uh, sales line at uh, 866 uh, 446 1133. Uh, you can also uh, uh, chat with us or, or communicate to us via our website at uh, allcovered.com. So at this point in time, uh, there are, uh, Derek, if we have uh, questions that we need to address, you can uh, shoot those to us and we'll let, uh, 
we'll let Travis take those, and if it's more on the business side, I can help with those as well. So let's see what we've got here. I do see a few questions that are on here. Um, All right, Travis, I'll let you start with those. Sure. Um, so the, the one question was, there's a radio button that said retain <clears throat> after check-in, yes, no. It's default to no. What does that mean? So uh, what that means is you can, when you save a document, you can save the document, put a comment in it, and then save, um, and then you can retain it being checked out. Um, so, uh, for example, Bill, can I um, take the uh, screen here? Yeah, certainly, Derek. I think you'll. Uh, there you go. Okay. All right. So if we go into here, um, let's do. So we're just going to edit the properties of this. Um, anytime you edit the document or the properties of the document, what it will do is um, it will uh, force you to, um, I think I need to check that out, check it back in. Um, check in. All right, so retain your checkout after check in. Um, so you check it in. Um, no one will be able to, uh, uh, basically it'll keep your check out. Um, so if I clicked yes uh, on this, it'll keep it checked out. So it's kind of like a safe, it's kind of like kind of saving it as a, for a version, um, but keeping it checked out. So it's going to add another version um, to this, uh, which is one of the things I actually forgot to show. Um, but if we go into the version history, you'll see that, um, you know, this is the last one I just checked out. So this is uh, the 6.0. If you don't do that, uh, it doesn't create a, a version for, it, for that document or anything of that sort. Um, when you share a, the, another question was, when you share a document that is only shared with you, how does that maintain compliance with permissions and AD groups? Uh, it doesn't. So um, what that is doing is that is um, sharing it via SharePoint and ignoring the Active Directory. So if you, if you have a user that is um, an Active Directory group nested into a SharePoint group, it's going to add that user um, to have additional um, permissions in that SharePoint group. Um, so you kind of want to be careful with some of the sharing of the, of the files and you might want to kind of just, uh, if it's not something that you want to manage and maintain or if it's something you need, feel like you need to manage and maintain, you may want to um, not have that sharing piece uh, available. But again, that, that's something that is part of the, uh, you know, the design and the analysis that we'll work through uh, with you, uh, really understanding the, uh, the rights and the flow of the documents. All, it's, you know, one of the challenges with the powerful tool such as SharePoint is you know, it gives you a great amount of flexibility. So as, as part of the you know, design process and the work that we do with you in, in architecting the solution, uh, you know, we pay specific attention to security so that we don't accidentally create, uh, you know, a, a gap where uh, someone may have access to something uh, that they shouldn't. Um, you know, again, kind of, kind of part of something that we're, we're certainly watching for. <coughs> um, hey, Travis, here's here's one that uh, that uh, that came in. Um, how are your services? delivered? Is there a, 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 an upfront assessment that's necessary or are there particular packages that you've, uh, you've put together? Um, we always do an upfront um, uh, discovery uh, or an assessment. 
Um, it's just, uh, you know, we, we don't know what we don't know, so we want to make sure that we do know what your business is, how your business works. Um, we do have a couple of uh, packages. Uh, we call it the collaboration portal. We have three different levels, and it includes uh, an assessment in each one. If those don't fit your uh, needs and you're looking for something more customized or highly uh, customized and, and uh, um, much larger, uh, we can definitely do that. It's just we probably are going to do an, an assessment up front versus having the assessment built into the uh, project. And then uh, uh, somebody uh, followed up on that one with, uh, are these uh, uh, delivered in, in all the cities that uh, you're in, or, or can these be delivered remotely? Um, they can be delivered both, um, but we we prefer, one of the things that we prefer is that uh, we do an, a, the assessment on site. It helps us to kind of engage with you a little bit better, um, but the majority of the work can be done remotely. Terrific. Those are the ones that uh, that came in to me, Travis. I don't know if somebody else has got uh, other uh, questions that you have there, Travis. I do have one more. Um, for people that like to share and store documents in box, how do you do? You know of any selling points of SharePoint over box? Um, it's a good question because uh, you know. I'm assuming uh, Box is a lot like Dropbox or, uh, or uh, a lot of those type of services. Um, I call those as like quick file shares. They're just quick and dirty just to get the file over or file transfers. SharePoint is more collaboration where um, you're working with a number of different people on the same document. So if I was working in, in Box or, or Dropbox, um, I would have to download the document or I couldn't work on the document in that system. I would have to either work on it in my Dropbox folder on my desktop and then those changes get uploaded. You couldn't, I don't believe you can work on them simultaneously, um, which you can with SharePoint. So those are the two different, uh, couple of different uh, items. The other thing is, is if you set up SharePoint, you can set it up to be more secure than Box and Dropbox. All right, terrific. Well, it looks like that's uh, that's it for our, our questions on this go round, uh, and and we're nearing the uh, the top of the hour. Certainly, uh, anyone that has um, uh, additional questions, we uh, we welcome you to uh, and invite you to give us a call. I do our, have uh, one more. Oh, go I ahead, have One more question. Sorry. Um, it says we are. Uh, we are kicking off the document management area of SharePoint. The last part of Travis's presentation involved project management. I'm wondering if this would be useful for task tracking of corrective actions following inspections for audits. I'm wondering if this would be useful. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, um, let me try and see if I can preface this right. Um, so yeah, you, you can. So if you have a document that goes through an approval process, what it does is it actually sets up a, um, a task list behind it. Um, and behind that, we can definitely, uh, you can assign tasks to people and, and uh, those can be um, stored for auditing purposes and, and inspections. Um, through the, the use of a workflow history. So the workflow history would keep that information. Uh, I hope that is, uh, I hope that helps answer that, that question. All right, terrific. Well, as, as we can tell by the, uh, the types of questions, uh, we've got, you know, very diverse uh, needs uh, across uh, our, our client base and potential clients. So um, certainly uh, would invite you to, you know, engage with us on a, on a deeper discussion uh, and uh, Travis has some, some folks on his team uh, specifically uh, geared on kind of the, the pre-sales engineering side and, and has the experience to, um, to answer, you know, more questions. And this is, uh, again, how you would uh, reach out with us and, uh, and reach out to us and, and, and start that process. And we certainly uh, welcome and invite you to do that either uh, through our direct sales line or through, uh, through our website. 
and then we can get you in touch with the appropriate uh, folks on on Travis and his team, uh, and uh, and your local uh, account rep to um, to start the discussion and to find out if there are things that we can do through our SharePoint Services team to uh, to help uh, you know enable uh, your business the way uh, you'd like it to be done. So at uh, at this point, I think that's uh, we're at the top of the hour. We thank you again for joining us today. We appreciate uh, the, you're taking your time out of your day to, um, to join us as we discuss uh, SharePoint, the business challenges that uh, we can help address with that, and then uh, and to, uh, to take advantage of Travis's time. Uh, thank you, Travis, for uh, lending your technical expertise to this presentation. And again, we look forward to uh, hearing from many of you uh, in the future as, uh, as your SharePoint needs uh, as you look to put those uh, into reality, we'd like to be uh, someone to help you uh, you do that. So uh, thanks for your time, and uh, we look forward to uh, crossing paths with you soon. Thank you.